The team behind Z Image Turbo recently released a control net union model. Here's how you can integrate it into your projects. So first up, I just wanna quickly note two things. The workflow is available to download with a link in the description. And secondly, the hierarchy of this workflow. So basically anything that's green is where you will want to make changes. Within the orange boxes here, these are all the different control nets. You can bypass these if you want, or you can leave them as is. Then lastly, we kind of have all the processing that's going on behind the scenes. So we have all the models being loaded here with the optional lower. So if you want to use this, just unbypass this. Within this control net group, basically we're getting everything set up to pass it over to the case sampler. And then within the case sampler, I split this into two. So when processing images with a control net with just a single K sampler, I noticed that the image quality was kind of lacking. So if you split it into two different K samplers, this first one is using a control net during the process for only the first five steps. Then the last four steps are used without a control net. This provides much better results. So let's take a look at generating some images with these control nets. So to make the change, just simply click on this git control net and then change it over to which one you want to use. Anything prefixed with CN will work. So we'll go with CN canny and kind of go through all of them in the process here. So canny, as you can see, is going to take a lot of information from that input image and then transpose that to the output image. This is really good. Basically, if you want to carry over a lot of details, such as an illustration, a pose, whatever it might be. There's a lot of different applications for Canny. And so here's the output. We can see it looks a little fried and that's okay. We can try to fix this post, but basically we can see a lot of the details from the input image are carried over to the output, such as this astronaut is not wearing a helmet at all. Her hair is quite similar to the input. Uh, it did do a good swap of the coffee mug to a camera in her hands, and even the general structure of her body is fairly similar to that of the input image. So that's using Canny. Now let's take a look at the control net pose. So to use the control net pose, I'm just going to simply click on this and change it out to CN underscore pose. And also just a quick note within this DW pose estimator that's being brought in from a custom node, the comfy UI control net aux node, you can actually detect certain parts of the subject. So if you only wanted to look at say the face and disable the body and the hands, you can just by making changes within this custom node. But Basically, the important thing to know is only the pose is being looked at. Everything such as like her hair, holding a coffee cup, or even general structure of the body is not being transferred over to that output image. And here we can see what that result will look like. So let's take a look at it a little bit closer. So here we can see it's now a man within a astronaut's uh, spacesuit rather than just being a strict outline of the subject. And when comparing them, side by side, there is a lot of differences, but generally it carries over that of the input image. Now it's important to remember that that last case sampler that we used is not using a control net at all. So we don't expect a one for one representation with every single output between these two images. Switching gears, we'll take a look at the HED control net. So let me change that here. And with the HED control net, we can see even within this sample image that the character is only taking a look at the outline of them. And then of course, some of the facial features and even this coffee cup within the hand. So, so let's see how this kind of translates to the final output image. All right, so we have our output image and we can see it is quite close to the original, from the hair structure to the body, tilt of the shoulders, and even the puffs in the pockets from the input image are being carried over. And it did a good job not kind of mangling the fingers at all. And even details like her eyebrows and eye placement are nearly identical. So if you want to use a control net for humans and kind of transferring one post to another, I think HED might be the way to go here. Lastly, let's take a look at the 
depth control nets. So I have a couple of depth control nets already added here. Uh, version 2 of Depth Anything and the recently released Depth Anything V3. So this is almost its own video perhaps. Depth Anything 3 offers a lot to folks. Uh, but let's just take a look first at the Depth Anything 2. So I'm just going to change this out to Depth uh, for the control net and then process this image. So here's our output from the Depth Anything version 2. And as we can see, the image itself looks pretty captivating. However, though, it doesn't really carry over too much from that original image. So the depth control net on this Union control net model is a little weaker. Um, and even too, she's standing in front of a flat wall, and I'm not really seeing much of like a flat uh, background. We can see definitely some level of depth here. Now let's see how this compares to the Depth V3. So we'll just kick this image off and take a look at the results. All right, so here is a image with depth anything version three. Again, here's our input. Uh, overall, again, like the depth anything V2, a lot is lost in the output, but the quality of the image is fairly good. Now, I expected a little bit of better results, quite honestly, with version three, because more information is being passed with that control net. However, though, we could try to make some tweaks, particularly with how many steps are being sent within each of those case samplers. But I see perhaps the only application to this model being that of just general composition of an image, but not much else. So that's it with using the brand new control net union model for Z image turbo. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please drop it in the comment section below. Again, this workflow is available on the prompting pixels website. Just simply search in Google prompting pixels and you should be able to find it. Thanks so much guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.